Coloured Stone with Black Boy to bring our next guests into the studio. Jill Singer, my co-host, Matthew Condon, our first guest. We're joined in the studio now by Brooke Collins and Mick Woywood. Brooke's one of the organisers of a festival coming up for Corin Dirk's 150th anniversary. And Mick Woywood has been awarded all sorts of history awards and community awards for his history of Corin Dirk. And good morning to you both. Good morning. morning Thanks John. for having us. Brooke, tell us a bit about the Corin Dirk 150th. Sure. Uh, For people who don't even know what Corin Dirk is. Yeah, okay. Well, from my personal perspective, uh, I'm a Hillsville girl. Um, I'm a local. I'm connected to Hillsville through the soles of my feet. I'm a descendant of William Barrack. Um, And that's when people go, oh, I know about him. Where's he from? Well, he was. Lots of people won't know about him, let's not assume. Yes, good, good. But I suppose uh, for a modern young lass like myself, I'm very proud of who I am and where I'm from. And I just really want to share that with uh, as many people as I can. Okay, let's go back. Back, who was Barack? So William William Barack, in my sort of family line, is my, don't know how many greats, but my great uncle. Um, He was famous for his art, but he was also kind of a very early political activist, if you like. He stood up for himself. He stood up for his rights, his land and his people. Um, And he did some amazing things like walked from Corrindirk, which is in Hillsville, Yarra Valley, all the way into Melbourne to protest against uh, what he thought wasn't right. Around about what years? Around about 1881. Wonderful Mm. artist. Have you got any of his work? I don't have any myself, but um, yes, maybe that's something I can aim for later in my life. Okay. So we'll come back to the details of the festival later on. But Mick, tell us a bit more then about the history of Corrindirk. Well, first off, I'd like to say Corrindirk's still there. Uh, it all, st- all started almost exactly 150 years ago today, 1863. Uh, the people of the Yarra Valley, the Wurundjeri people, had been all but destroyed by white settlement. Uh, their numbers had de- declined very, very rapidly. There are not many more than about 36 Wurundjeri left alive by 1863. Most of them departed the Yarra Valley. It's no longer a good place to be. They've gone up to the uh, Upper Goulburn. And uh, in 1860, they were able to uh, uh, win over from the government uh, something like 5,000 acres of land on the Acheron River. And that was a big thing. They'd actually walked to Melbourne from the Acheron, asked the government for the land, the government is ashamed of its treatment, past treatment, and they got the land. They'd only been there uh, a year or so when they were pushed off the land by the local squatters. Which is what happened all around the country. Yes, of course it did. Same in North America, the same thing happened. Mick, that was quite, quite an extraordinary period in our um, history of white settlement. 95% of the Wurundjeri were wiped out in, in what period of time? Uh, in the first 18 years, 1853, uh, uh, there's about 36 left. In other words, 95, 96% are dead. Uh, it wasn't so much conflict in the Yarra Valley. It had mainly to do with disease, with loss of land, uh, fragmentation of culture, and, and uh, I suppose to some extent white food, and uh, clothing, just the handing out of blankets to people that had normally slept in uh, possum skin rugs. Uh, blankets get wet. Lung infections were one of the big killers. It was, was devastating. Yeah, it was Corinduk a mission? Again? Was it a mission, a religious mission? No, no, Corinduk wasn't. From the Acheron, they realised that there was no hope of settling up there. Uh, they had with them a, a rather remarkable lay preacher, John Green, uh, an astounding man, the things that he did in his lifetime. Uh, he suggested they go back to the Yarra and he'd arrange land for them there with the government. So they walked across the uh, the Great Divide and they run, arrived at Hills Hall 150 years ago, two or three weeks ago. It actually ran as a very successful business enterprise, didn't it? Oh, yes. It's, uh, I mean, it's a turnaround you wouldn't believe could happen. I mean, they'd been belted from piddle to post for, for something like 20-odd years, uh, and yet uh, they'd, they'd asked for the land, and they'd realised that they had to live like white people. And they said, we'll, fi- we'll farm the land like yeoman farmers. And this is what they did. 
How did you become a historian? You're a bricklayer. How does a bricklayer become a historian? Well, that's another story. But 20, <laughs> 20, 20 books to your credit and community awards and the like and degrees. How, what, what's happened there? Well, you know, I suppose it all happened. My grandfather, we were brought up at Frankston. I can remember my grandfather uh, walking around along the Frankston Beach way back in the 1930s and saying to me, see those shells over there, Michael? He used to call me Michael. He said, that's where blackfellas had their dinner. I mean, it was really something that got me to thinking. And uh, so most of those years in the building trade, um, I did a lot of reading and uh, and uh, got enthralled with the, the local story. And I realised the only way to understand uh, the Aboriginal story is to understand it with the ter- within the territory, the Yarra Valley. So I focused on the Yarra Valley mm-hmm. And, uh, and went to university, did a degree, the whole lot. <laughs> yes, well, you know, they say that hard work never killed anybody, <laughs> but it leaves you incredibly bent. <laughs> <laughs> by, by 1980, uh, I uh, I'd realised that I couldn't continue working. I had to do something, and I was building a house out in Bend of Islands, and our chap was a uh, uh, university ac- academic, and he said to me, yeah, I thought of doing a university degree, Mick. And he could have bowled me over because I hadn't finished secondary school. But I did. I applied. I was accepted. I did a degree course in three years. They invited me back to do an honours year. How I old en- were you, Mick? I ended up in hospital. I was 60 at the time. Mm. What was that like for you, going going back to study at 60? Uh, well, it's like coming into the interview this, interview this morning. I was very <laughs> nervous about it. Everyone's 18 or 19, 20, and I'm 60. But no, it worked remarkably well. I enjoyed every moment of it. It was hard. I know, uh, oh it was enjoyable. I look back on that as uh, good years. I'm, I mean, I'm uh, not surprised at all that... Um, that a bricklayer has become an eminent historian. I was doing a, I wrote a book on Brisbane some years ago, and the finest historian that I dealt with um, during my research was a truck driver. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had an obsession, and he was on the ground every day. He was driving around, looking at locations and studying, you know, the dips and valleys and roads, and he knew where every building was. So uh, this isn't um, news to me at all. No, mm. no, it's life experiences. Yeah. I mean, most of the students there at La Trobe. You know, they're in their early 20s, uh, just out of school. They hadn't had life experiences. They still, you know, finished the course and did well. But I had the value of, particularly for history, of uh, life experiences. So, Brooke, take us back to the festival. When you, You've got a resource there. You've got a bloke who's devoted himself extraordinarily and is a legend within the community, much decorated and awarded for the, the research, but this is a community festival, not a historical festival. That's right. So how do you bridge that? How do you merge those two? Well, I suppose, actually, it probably is a little bit of a history lesson because uh, Indigenous history isn't just for Indigenous people. You know, we sort of forget that, I think. Uh, at this history, particularly for Corin Dirk, is uh, for everybody. So for everybody in Hillsville, for everybody maybe in Warby Jill, for everybody... Thank you. Yes, <laughs> uh, from other areas as well. So we need to also remember that... Uh, or the residents of Corinderk didn't necessarily come just from Hillsville and close by. They came from far and wide. I think uh, going back to when I was at high school and uh, primary school, I did all my schooling in Hillsville, I really didn't hear Corinderk mentioned much at all. So that was something, uh, well, I feel quite disappointed about that now, looking back. I have um, a daughter in Year 10, and last year they did a whole unit on Corin Dirk. So for me, I feel like that's part of the purpose why I'm doing what I'm doing. So there's Neil Murray, Kutcher Edwards, a whole lot of music, a whole lot of history, lots of things coming up. I confess I was quite ignorant about Corin Dirk, but mm. there was a play last year Jack Charles was in yeah. at Carlton Courthouse that we went and saw, mm. and it moved me to tears. It was beautifully put together, mm. and it made me feel profoundly ignorant of our own local history on this stuff. Yeah. So the more you can bring it to people's front of mind, the better, surely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, my sister and I have been working really hard on this, but 
you know, in the same vein, we haven't been working very hard. There's been people emerging, just piping up from nowhere, from the cracks, from obscure places, whether they've actually got a connection to Corin Dirk themselves or they know somebody who was there. Unfortunately, we very recently lost a very dear friend who, uh, as a young fella, lived in the house at Corin Dirk and he only lost his life a few weeks ago. So I think Corin Dirk is still very relevant today. The people of Corin Dirk uh, came from all different parts of uh, sort of Victoria and beyond, and they work together for a common cause. And I really think that kind of underpins the whole Corin Dirk story. And if we sh- we're not applying that to our lives today, well, you know, it's a pretty basic philosophy to before live by. We, before we move on, Brooke, yeah. you're, you've got Wanden in there, in your name. Yeah, so I can hide behind my married name of Collins, yes, but I'm a Wanden. You're a Wanden. And there is, of course, the town of Wanden. Yes. So, and that is from your Wanden. Well, as a joke, as a teenager, I told everybody that that town was named after me, of course, as a teenager. <laughs> but um, I don't like to be perfectly correct about why things are named the way, the way they are. I think that ruins the story. But a very brief story is uh, my uh, great-grandfather, when he was born, he was a half-caste, uh, born by a full-blood woman. Uh, in a very short story, he was thrown into the river, um, I think on purpose. He was dragged out of the water and then returned to his family at an older age. And he was then known as Wandoon, and I believe Wandoon has something to do with spirit in the water. Ah. But I really enjoy not being correct about that because that ruins <laughs> a good conversation. It does. <laughs> anyway, Wandoon is there now, and mm. uh, as are all those wonderful little towns, including Warby or Warburton, <laughs> where I grew up in the region. Um, it's Did not... you hear about Corin Dirk when you were a young no, lass? No, yeah, not at go. all. There but sort go. of in our history, we did mm. the squatocracy, but mm. um, not. Yeah, you did the gold rush. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But um, to locate. Aborigines were Corin people. Dirk. They stood on one leg with a spear yeah. in the corner. That and they it. were used as motifs for our ashtrays. <laughs> mm. yeah. That's, That's right. That was it. Mm. Um, it's near the Hillsville Sanctuary for people who want to go. On yeah, sure. Sat- Saturday from 12 noon. So where do you go? You go into Hillsville and then where? So you need to go along Kuirup Road uh, and we'll have the place well signed. We realise uh, it is slightly off the beaten track, but it will be well worth it. So if you just go into Hillsville. So if you head towards Hillsville, whack that into your sat-nav or into your Google Maps, whatever you use. We don't yeah. use Melways anymore, do we? No, <laughs> no we, just, we just know where Hillsville is. But yes. if you drive out to Hillsville from the main street, will there be signs? Yes, there will. So it's actually before the main street, before you get to... So if you get to the main street, you've gone too far. Okay. And look for Barrack Lane. Barrack Lane, B-A-R-A-K. That's uh-huh. right. Barrack Lane, Hillsville. Starting from 12 noon, there's music, there's market stalls, food and drink, but no alcohol, history, healing. Mm. What sort of healing? Well, it depends. For me, I, I think it's really important for people to, if they wish, come back to Corin Dirk and feel pride that their ancestors really did, su- did succeed for 12 to 15 years before the good old political strategy of stuffing them over. Okay. From 12 noon through till 8 o'clock, uh, Neil Murray and Lee Morgan, Kucha Edwards, the Deadly Award winners, Young Warriors, Sebastian Jorgensen, the Aboriginal Children's Choir, Aaron Burton and Friends, the Dukes of Despair, Coloured Stones music being featured and community fairs, market stalls, food, drink, healing, lots of things at Corin Dirk Festival on Saturday in Healesville from 12 noon till 8 o'clock at night. Look, uh, Mick, great yarn. Congratulations to you. Thank you, And may your work continue. Mick Woywood, author and historian, got a Victorian Community History Award, a degree from La Trobe University at the age of 60 after a career as a bricklayer. It's a great yarn in itself. And Brooke Collins, one of the organisers, a cultural strengthening youth worker with Hillsville Indigenous Community Services Association to give Brooke her full title. (laughs) And Matthew Condon's terrific book, Three Crooked Kings, published by University of Queensland Press. Matthew Condon telling us the true story of what was going on in Queensland, the first of two books. I can't wait for the second one. Jill Singer, my co-host from RMIT University. Thank you all for coming. This has been The Conversation Hour on your ABC.